<laughs> what do you love? Kurt always what gets that one wrong. Love. What is that one? What How do you I? think about? What you, oh, the Council, the of, Dads. Council of Dads. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So parental advisory being what it is, the question I put down, what do you think about for the Council of Dads is having sensitive conversations with your kids. And I realized the first time my son, he went to, he was homeschooled through fifth grade, my oldest. And in fifth grade, there were reasons we decided to go and send him to public school. And he's about halfway through the year. And keep in mind, preacher's kid, I did not discover broccoli until I was 30 something years old. And my life's been lived backwards. Everything I should do as a teenager, I discover now and I basically do now. Uh, except sleeping around. I don't do that. I have my wife. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when he came home with a big dare shirt on, I was like, oh, I need to talk to him about some things. So we had, which each of the kids, as they hit certain ages, we had to have sensitive talks. Now, Joe, obviously, you might have a different sensitive talk, like uh, birds and bees or, or when somebody first experiences hate in your house, whatever it is. But how do you guys approach having these sensitive conversations with your children? I mean, it kind of depends on the conversation. Um, well, with you, let's talk about the broccoli. Okay, so um, that, that's a question I get often from parents is, hey, at what age and how do I talk to my kids about this? And first off, are you in a legal state? Because um, that's, that's the biggest denominator right there. I'm in a legal state, so I'm super honest, I'm super open. Now, before we became a legal state, I kept everything hidden. Anytime my kids did in fact see it, I was rolling up a special cigar or you know, when they were super young, I told them it was dandelions. Um, <laughs> once it be, which, you know, there's a story. I had got me a fresh batch of dandelions once and I had gone to the bathroom. I was working on rolling up some cigars and I come back out and my oldest was like five at the time and my dandelions were gone. And so I start looking around and I go to the bathroom and there's remnants of my dandelions in the sink. Uh, he thought, that the dining room table was dirty because I had a piece of paper there that I had shredded up my dandelions on. So he, he went ahead and flushed it down the drain for me. <laughs> Just clean it up for you. <laughs> uh, um, what other, well, what other sensitive talks have you had to have? That was the first one, at least was tough with four kids. I'm sure you've had many, but yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so once that we got, it's probably my eight year old again. Yeah, so at, at my house, we've had a bunch of different sensitive talks with our kids. Um, one that we recently had was about um, the difference between drugs and medicine. And we talked about how mm. even medicine prescribed by a doctor can become drugs if abused. And so we, we talked about how medicine is something that's used for your benefit, um, it is a substance or chemical or whatever, you know, whatever a version it comes in um, that's used for your benefit. And drugs are something that is detrimental and harmful to you. Um, and we also talked briefly about addiction, but, you know, how much they understood because they're, they're relatively young still is another thing. Yeah. Um, and I haven't had this chat with them yet, but I envision that in the future, I will have a talk to them about um, my dad. I've had this talk, or uh, this story, I've shared it with you, Charles, about my dad, um, how this was years and years ago before any states had legalized broccoli. And uh, he was growing, or he went to his doctor, was, right, yeah. was trying to figure out how to get his blood pressure down. And... Um, and he had tried all kinds of different medicine and he couldn't get his blood pressure to to stabilize to to normalize and his doctor said look i can't tell you to do this but it might help if you had some dandelions and so my dad was growing dandelions and he thought he was being sneaky he wasn't um he had a bookshelf that he had lined up just right with his closet door. So when he opened the closet door, it stood right up against the bookshelf and he had screwed the bookshelf to the door and behind it was where 
he was growing his his dandelions <laughs> and, and i'm like you know being young we're like there's a light over there <laughs> that doesn't seem right um, i want scooby-doo i know and, what's going on and it it did it normalized his his um blood pressure and everything um mm-hmm. but he he felt guilty about it because it was illegal and so he went off of it and i can't help but wonder if him going off of it and his blood pressure going back up is what inevitably was was one of the factors that led to his um his brain aneurysm that he died from mm-hmm. and so it he may have lived a fair bit longer if he had still been been using his dandelions yeah. so, right um but when so that, go ahead yeah, yeah. That, so that's that's a conversation that i'm sure i'll have with my kids in the future that look regardless of what people say things are not as black and white as people would like you to to know there's there's correct ways that you can use things that that god has given us on this earth and there are ways that they can be abused and it doesn't matter what it is it whether it's it's uh substances medicine drugs eat food anything anything can really be abused to an extreme if you take it to an extreme and so everything is permissible not everything is beneficial yep to you i give you all seed bearing plants and herbs you're triggering me sir (laughs) uh you know what along those lines i had to have the talk about know your audience really young with my kids um we give them a hard time about not they don't we swear in our house a lot a lot yeah you do i mean it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah i do um and so i was like i we tried that that tv parenting thing of when we we're expecting the first well i was like we gotta clean our language up like <laughs> i'm a paramedic that's not a that's not a thing in my world it's a punctuation in my world so i'll try and funny enough, she was the one that taught her first kid or their first cuss word and it wasn't me. And that was the funniest thing. But we realized yeah, Charles, we ourselves. Charles came to that conversation. He was like, the <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> you and your buttons. Um, but language is man. just descriptors, man. It's they, they, they have meanings given to them by us. It's all in how we use them. That's how I teach my kids. It, if you're using yeah. it in a hateful way, it's wrong. If you're not, it's not. Now, not getting too deep into, I don't know what your relationship is, but you, know, if your dad was still youth pastor mentality, my, you know, my parents are very f- religious still. And so I had to teach them, if you say something like this at me, me and Keepaw's house, there will be consequences. Yep. 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 And I just, I just said, cons- you never know. You go to school and say something, there'll be, there could be consequences. So you really need to. There is always freedom of time. speech. There is not freedom of consequence. There you go. Yeah. Well, and uh, we talk to our kids about consequences, both that there are positive consequences and negative consequences uh, yeah. based on your actions. Because I don't want the term consequences to be a yeah. a loaded thing for right. my kids. I want them to realize that consequences just means what happens based on what you did. Um. So, uh, speaking of consequences. Promoting the show over and over again brings some negative consequences because this is a guy. This is a guy who's known me since I was 15 years old. I'm not sure if I want that person on my show telling my secrets. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> he's, he's known me a long time. Um, we got to yeah, recently let, catch. Let up us know year. all of his dirty secrets. You can I... uh, reach out to the show, <laughs> WNN Show at gmail.com. <laughs> or, or if you would prefer to leave a voicemail with all of his dirty secrets, you can head on over to wiseandnerdy.com slash call dad and leave us a voicemail with all of Charles's dirty secrets. Just remember, we may not be your fathers, but we'll always be your daddies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sensitive conversations are sensitive. And you realize all three of us are kind of on that same theme of balance and flow. You know, right place, right time, moderation, knowing where you are, knowing how you do things. The hardest one to have, I think, is is when a, a child experiences hate and and either to themselves or somebody around them. And especially if it comes from somebody they love, you know, and that's 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 always a tough one. 
Uh, maybe that's what we should put on uh, uh, another show, Joe, for Daddy Tell Me a Story of how we dealt with some of the, the ugliness in the world when our kids were still kids. And, well, yours still are. So we are in those different phases of life. Yours are still under 10. Your oldest 11. is mine? 11. My Ahead. oldest is 11. No, no I, I counted yours. Yours, <laughs> yours was on purpose, on purpose, on purpose. Oops. But no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my 18-year-old was born when I was, well, 17. So I don't know about on purpose. <laughs> that, <laughs> too many jokes. Too many jokes. <laughs> Uh, I will say that makes me slightly jealous. I knew I had another friend of mine who his oldest, we were both around 35, 36 at the time. His oldest, his youngest rather was graduating high school. He had two kids, his youngest graduating high school. And like, man, cause he had his first when he was 17 and his second when he was 18. He really didn't learn to the second that's one. How to my life. first year, 17 okay, and 18. Way, yeah. So, but that's, that's where he stopped, but he, he married the mom and they were still together. And I was like, well, I, I can imagine you've got so many stories of how tough it was being a teenage father and this and that. But I see you at 35 and I'm going, you still got a lot of life in you to go party. So you mean in two months, you're going to be kid free and you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. I'm a little jealous, yeah. just a little. But then you got into my boat where you have an eight year old. My youngest is 10. So yeah, now I got 10 I, more you know, years. I'm sure you love all three of your kids that you claim. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, where are we? Where are we? We told all that stuff. Roll so that on on dice. the oh, oh. Go ahead. He's gonna roll the dice. You tell the thing, Joe. On the topic of talking with your kids about substances, uh, the, the way I go about it with hard things, and the way I've always explained it, because there does not do it justice. Um, I explain to my kids that there are things in this life that if you try them. You, in fact, will love them more than everything. You will love them more than your spouse. You'll love them more than your friends. You'll love them more than your health and your job. That is why we never touch them. It's because they feel amazing. Because they will feel so, so amazing that you'll give everything else up for them. Um, and that's, that's the approach I go with the hard stuff. Because there doesn't do it justice when they say it's bad for you. It's going to make your teeth rot up. That's, that's not the problem. It's, it's that you can try it once and you're done. Yep. Yeah. That, I, that, I did not think about that one. I've, I've used similar to that's good. It's good stuff. So what like, you roll? Like when I went in, oh go. no, keep, no, do your thing, man. We're having fun. We're having fun. So, so we'll, we'll I, I went in for surgery. Post. Okay. So I, I went in for surgery. Um, I had my my appendix had burst, and I was sitting in the ER for like seven hours before they finally took me back. And I was sitting there for another couple hours before somebody finally came back and they said, "Hey, have they given you anything for pain yet?" And I'm sitting there, you know, doubled over. I said, "No." And so they hooked me up to an IV and I don't know what they gave me. My brother is sitting there with me. They gave me something and he asked me like, you know, two minutes later, how do you feel? And I said, this is the best I have ever felt in my life. Do not tell me the name of this. I don't want to know <laughs> because it felt freaking phenomenal. And that's, that's the danger of these things is I've never experienced that much bliss. Now, I don't want to know what it was because I'm dumb. Uh, my real us read that one, Joe. My mother in law said our bodies will be full of morphine in heaven. <laughs> uh, yeah, she had morphine once after actually, she had a, a brain aneurysm the same year my dad did. Um, and they gave her morphine after that, and she she loved it. 